Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Calvin Leung Huang and I'm the engineering lead on the Vault ecosystem team. Joining me is RT Iyengar, who is a senior product manager on the Vault core team. And today we'll be talking about the valuable Vault agent. RT, off to you to get us started on this journey. Thank you, Kelvin. Let's start by understanding the market trends first. At HashiCorp, we see all our customers, users, you, in various stages of digital transformation. You have workloads distributed across the hybrid and public cloud environments. The modern data center is a dynamic, distributed world, different from the traditional data center. So, on top of mind for you is the question, how do I ensure security in this world? This needs various considerations. Your applications, services, systems need tokens, secrets, keys. You are constantly thinking of ways to avoid secret sprawl. How are secrets managed? You are evaluating how to evolve to a zero trust security approach. You are thinking about how to secure your resources, how to enforce compliance, how to avoid security data breaches. You want access to any resource to be authenticated first and then authorized based on tightly defined policies. And you're also thinking about how this scales in this complex ephemeral environment. HashiCorp's Vault helps address these security concerns. HashiCorp's Vault is a central secrets manager. You can centrally store, access, distribute static dynamic secrets across applications and infrastructure using Vault. Vault authenticates using trusted identities all requ requests to different clouds, systems, endpoints. Zero trust security is predicated on securing everything based on identities, which can be derived from whatever your platform is. Um, it could be the public cloud platforms, it could be Kubernetes, it could be Active Directory. And this is used to authenticate into Vault. These can be human or machine workflows. Vault also helps to keep application data protected with centralized key management and simple APIs for data encryption and transformation. And Vault is API driven. It uses policies to codify, protect and automate access to secrets management enabling this to scale across a distributed topology. So now you want to adopt Vault to avoid secret sprawl. Let us understand what this means for you. Your applications need to consume secrets to work with other applications and services. That means they need to integrate with Vault API. This means you need to write code in those applications in order to fetch and manage secrets. So you need to make those applications vault aware. So this involves writing application code and maintaining that code and doing that across the thousands of applications that you have deployed and building that expertise amongst your teams and the training needed to support that. And these systems and applications are managed by different teams. So how do you coordinate this into a consistent workflow? These are some of the challenges that we have heard from you. So we want to help you eliminate the risks of secret sprawl 
and secure your resources consistently across your organization. That's what your security operators are constantly striving for. And we want to help your application developers to focus on building their applications, not the underlying vault plumbing to fetch secrets to make these applications work. Those of you familiar with the early 2000s BBC quiz show will relate to this slide. The goal of that show was to eliminate the weakest link in every quiz round. And that's exactly what our goal is, to eliminate any weak link in your journey towards a consistent security posture for secrets management. This means enabling every app team to easily adopt Vault. And that's exactly where HashiCorp's Vault agent steps in. As you can see in the picture, the Vault agent is a tool that runs in the application's environment. It is the Vault binary that is run in a client mode. Applications can easily integrate with the Vault agent, which authenticates them automatically into Vault and fetches and manages the secrets, whether it be secret zero or the ongoing life cycle and renewal of those secrets. Thus making the adoption of Vault very simple, easy and consistent. I will now hand it over to Calvin who will discuss the Vault agent in more detail. Over to you, Calvin. Great. Thank you, Arti. So now I'll be diving into the past, the present, and the future of Agent. Along the way, we'll be taking a look at some of the features from Agent and the value that they bring to the table. And lastly, I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek at some of the things that we're thinking about for making Agent even better. Let's start off by trying to understand where we came from and why we developed Agent. Agent started as an additional mode of operation within the Vault binary that was solely focused on performing authentication against Vault, nowadays known as AutoAuth. The main value that it provided was that it allowed third-party and legacy applications to interact with Vault without having to embed any Vault-specific logic into its code base. So updating an application code base was sometimes either not desired, not permitted by the team who's deploying that application, or just simply impossible if that application is not owned by the organization. We also realized that Agent brought other benefits as well, such as managing the lifecycle of Vault tokens that would receive from AutoAuth. And this ensured that tokens would be renewed in a timely manner or if it couldn't be renewed, Agent would take care of re-authenticating and retrieving a new token. Over time, we got to add other features to Agent, such as secrets rendering and templating, proxying and caching, and more recently, persistent caching for Kubernetes. We added the ability for Agent to render static and dynamic secrets from Vault into files, which can then be consumed by applications. Templates allowed service owners to define how to render these secrets, which can be very helpful in cases such as properly formatting these dynamic secrets, which should be usernames and passwords into database connection strings, for instance. We also allowed and added the ability for agent to proxy and cache vault requests and responses. And this helps to scale Vault's performance by reducing the number of requests that ends up hitting our Vault servers. And more recently, we added the ability for this caching layer to be temporarily persisted across init and sidecar containers in Kubernetes workflows to avoid duplicate fetches of the same tokens and secrets. Let's take a look at how each of these features that we've talked about, including AutoAuth, works. We'll start off with AutoAuth. When Agent starts up, it first performs authentication against Vault and receives a Vault token. This token can then be written to this in what we call a file sync. In addition to file permissions, the token can be optionally protected through Vault's response wrapping system, which is a trust on first use mechanism, and 
Also, it can optionally be cryptographically encrypted. Setting up AutoAuth is fairly simple. We need to specify the auth method to perform the authentication against, and optionally, any number of things to write this token to. Next, we'll go into rendering and templating. Once again, upon startup of agent, we will authenticate and retrieve a vault token. Agent can then use this token to perform secrets fetching and render them to disk through templates provided in the configuration. Applications can then consume these secrets as desired. In a similar fashion, you can declare templates in a configuration file that tells agent how and where to render these secrets. Now, let's talk about proxying and caching. Once again, agent authenticates and receives a vault token. Agent can be kept running and act as a proxy for any vault requests sent from this point onward. And cache any of the responses that may return a dynamic secret or tokens. Identical requests against agent that generates dynamic secrets can return cache responses up until around its expiry without having to ask Vault for secrets to be generated every time. And to set up proxying and caching, we need to declare a cache stanza and optionally state whether we want to use the token from AutoAuth to make these proxy requests. We also need to specify a listener stanza to tell agent what address and port to listen to. Lastly, let's talk about persistent caching in Kubernetes. In Kubernetes, init containers are containers that are ran momentarily at the beginning of a deployment and can be used to, to do things like execute, setup, or utility scripts. When a pod is deployed, an agent init container can start up and perform tasks such as authentication and templating. With persistent caching, the token and secrets re retrieved by agent is persisted to a memory volume. Once all init containers are done running, a pod may start a long-running container, also known as a sidecar container. When this sidecar container starts up, it can restore the tokens and secrets cached by the init container, keeping the leases for the same secrets renewed so that applications can consume these without any service interruptions. Setting up persistent caching for Kubernetes requires just one additional line to our configuration file. We simply specify persist for Kubernetes within the cache stanza. Once we have the configuration with the set of features that we want enabled, we can get agent running. To do so, it's fairly simple. All we need to do is to tell Vault to run in agent mode and specify the configuration file. Hopefully, this quick walkthrough got you excited to try out agent in your deployments. Now, let's talk about some future facing features for agents. We're looking into three overarching themes when it comes to additional feature sets. Improving adoption, monitoring and visibility, and scale and resiliency. On the adoption side, we're looking into enhancements such as allowing persistent caching beyond Kubernetes, adding auto auth syncs to uh, environment variables, and allowing agent to restart all or part of its subsystems through process signals. On the monitoring and visibility side of things, we would like to add health checks and status checks that are specific for agents, as well as additional metrics for better insights into our deployments of agents. And lastly, on scaling and resiliency, we're thinking of adding multi-cluster support for agent so that it can talk to different cluster as a fallback mechanism, and also multi-autoauth support for dropping different vault tokens for distinct applications. These are just some of the things that we're thinking about, so I hope that you keep an eye out for more exciting things coming for Agent. And with that, I'll hand, ba hand it back to Arti to close it out. Thank you, Calvin. So thus far, we have talked about what the Vault Agent is and how it interacts with your applications. Calvin also spoke about how it has evolved over the years. I'll now try to summarize the key takeaways from this talk. In your quest towards zero trust security, it is important to ensure that all your application teams secure access to their sensitive resources in a consistent manner. This implies adopting a secure, 
central dynamic secrets manager like Walt. The Walt agent helps greatly simplify the Walt adoption journey by reducing the Walt awareness required. Applications can very easily integrate with the Walt agent. It handles the authentication into Walt, fetching and managing secrets. It supports caching to reduce the load on Walt and it supports templating to render secrets in formats desirable for the application. Thus, application teams can focus on their core app development. This contributes to increased productivity amongst these teams. The Vault agent eliminates the need to write and maintain application code to integrate with Vault reducing the cost and time needed for all of that. Overall, the agent makes Vault adoption easy by reducing any friction towards this, thereby helping provide a consistent security posture across your organization that scales with the environment. I'd now like to share what we've heard from some of you that use the Vault agent at a large scale. A large healthcare customer said that the Vault agent can be an excellent spring and shock absorber between Vault and applications. Another large financial services customer said that the Vault agent helped them, them achieve their goal of zero trust security for secrets management with a near zero touch experience. This customer has over 50,000 Vault agents deployed. These speak clearly of how many of you have seen immense value in adopting the Vault agent for the secrets management use case. And finally, if you would like to learn more about the Vault agent, check out resources on HashiCorp Learn as well as on our documentation site. And I'd like to say a thank you on behalf of Calvin and me to all of you for joining this session. Thank you.